I'm Ben and this is Hyperfine, resources and tutorials for architects by architects. Recently I was able to work with my friend Eric from 30x40 Design Workshop to create his drawing style in a Revit template. If you visit his channel, uh, one of his most popular videos is about his drawing style. How does he use hierarchy of line weight and color to really get a distinctive and compelling visual look. Uh, and so we're trying to create that in a Revit template. Now being Revit versus AutoCAD, there are things that the template does differently and different ways to use it. And so I made this video to answer some of the most common questions we get. One, how do I use this? Two, how do I edit the template to get my own look, my new style? And three, what's up with that cool solar diagram that we get on the second page? All the links you need are down in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. But enough talk, let's get started. So the first question is, how do I use this? So let's talk about what it is actually that you're getting. So you get a project file, which I have open here right now. You also get a template file that has all these standards in it, just not the actual house. Uh, and within that project file and within the template, you've got various line styles um, that Eric uses. You've got a collection of families that are styled um, both in color and text. You get uh, view templates for elevations, floor plans, and a foundation plan. And then you get some text types and some dimension types. And so these, all these things combined will give you a consistent and compelling look to your drawings um, that's different than what you get straight out of the box with Revit. So if you want to use all these standards in a project that you already have existing, I've got a different video that shows five ways of copying Revit standards over from one project to another. I'll put a card at the top of the screen right now, and I'll put the link to that video in the description. The other way you can do it is if you're starting a brand new project, um, just make sure you choose the template. So if we'll go new, where you where you, it asks you to choose which template file you're starting with, just hit browse and find wherever you have that saved. And then it'll start a new template, it'll start a new project with all of these line styles, um, all these families, and all of the view templates in place so that when you start building your model then you can more quickly just annotate with these items. So let's talk about styling a floor plan. In your, in your project you're going to have multiple floor plans and you're going to have working views where you sort of add notes to yourself and reference lines and a lot of things that help you design your project that you don't really want to show in a presentation. Right? This drawing right now is not good for presentation. So a view template uh, which this project comes with a few of, is a good way to globally make uh, visual changes so that all your drawings become consistent. So if you go into your uh, parameters, choose View Template, you can choose the 30 by 40 schematic plan and hit OK, and it'll globally make a bunch of changes, right? We see the walls get post shade, we filter out some reference planes, we filter out the other sections, um, it turns on some families, it turned off some other families, uh, it added pattern to the floor, that type of thing, right? And so if we apply this to multiple views, they all become consistent. They all start to look the same. So this obviously looks better than before, but it's not complete in the way that the full-on plan is. And so to get from where we started from to here, you quickly apply the view template. To get from here to maybe a finished drawing, you still have to do some drafting, right? You still have to... Uh, use detail lines to show things that are above and below. You have to add dimensions. You have to break your own section markers. You have to add your own text notes, that type of thing, right? So as most, most things with Revit, a template will get you 90% of the way there. Uh, to get the full completed view that you want to present to your clients, you still have to do some manual drafting task to add in information. So we can do the same thing with elevations. Here you see a finished view. Here's a unfinished working view that looks not as good. So we go to view template we apply the schematic elevation template, you can see we get 90% of the way there, right? We get the trees to come back in, uh, we get the reference planes to disappear, we get the wall texture, we get the shadows, we get the roof texture, things like that. We're not 100% of the way there because we still have drafting to do, right? We've got to draft in this dark line around the eaves, um, we've got to change some of our line weights, we've got to add a filled region down here to mask the foundation and dash in a foundation line. So the view template will get you 90% of the way there, we still have to do some drafting to get our final finished look. If you check out my pro course, and I'll put the uh, link in the description, uh, I've got lots of tutorials about how exactly we draft with these fill region detail lines and what they're all supposed to represent. Uh, with this template, what we've provided you, if you look on sheet A1.2, uh, we provided some different notes about certain line overrides and filled regions and different things that you need to draw uh, in order to sort of get the same look 
that Eric has created for his drawings. So check out the second sheet. That'll give you an idea of the things that you need to be looking for in order to stylize uh, these views 100% accurate to the way he does it. The template will get you 90% of the way there. So the next main question is, how do I edit the template to create my own style? And I think the three things that you really need to consider here are the colors, the text, and the hierarchy of information. So let's talk about those three things. Color can be a really, really effective way of creating your own style. Uh, this red really pops out to me. You don't see a lot of construction documents that have color in it, so I think it's a very effective way, a very effective tool to use. Uh, and with this template, you get a lot of things that are styled uh, with this red color. You can see we've got all these different families, so grids and section markers and door tags and room tags. And to change these into the color of your choice, you've got to do a couple different things. One is you've got to go up into the Manage tab, into the Object Styles. And here we get um, a dialog that looks very similar to graphic stand, to the uh, visibility graphics, except that this is globally changing it everywhere in your project, whereas the visibility graphics will change one view, and you can use that to create a view template, like we already talked about. This is going to change it everywhere in your project unless you change it somewhere else. And most of the changes we've made are here on this annotations tab. And so anything you see with this red color is something that I've changed. So callouts, section markers, door tags, all these things. Um, if I've changed it here, you can change it to something else. The trick, though, is that you can't just change it there. A lot of them, a lot of these changes you have to make in the family itself. So if we take, for instance, this section marker uh, and we edit the family, you can see that it's been changed in the family as well. And so you've got to select the field region, change that color, then load that back into your project, make sure the color matches in your uh, annotations tab over here on your um, object styles, and that will change it everywhere. So this is a lengthy and time-consuming process. One quick note on colors, uh, whenever you're in the Revit color dialog box, choose a blank, a blank uh, square down here, and then whenever you choose your color, hit add, and it'll save it here. Uh, so these are the colors here that I use for Hyperfine, which is my tutorials and professional training. And then here are the colors that I use for Ben Norkin Architecture, which is my actual professional practice. The next thing that might set you apart is your font. Uh, and Eric uses two fonts, Franklin, Gothic, and Oswald. Uh, and you get both of them with this tutorial, uh, with this template. Uh, and in your project, you're going to have to go through and create your own text types if you want to use a different font. So here we've given you... Um, six or seven different text types with different sizes. To make your own, what you have to do is select it, edit type, and then just change the font. Um, make sure you duplicate the type, change the font to whatever you want to use. You also have to change these in all the families that involve text. So all these sections, the door text, things like that. So if we're back in our section marker, um, if we select the label, the label will also have a font assigned, Franklin Gothic Medium. So wherever you change it, just make sure you're doing it everywhere in your entire project, right? Um, that's the thing, is consistency of the look. So you can't have your color in 75% of the drawings and a different color in the other 25%. Same thing with your font. You can't have different fonts all over the place. You gotta choose one font and go with it. Um, if you're looking for a cool one, try Comic Sans or Papyrus. Those are really popular. And that brings me to hierarchy, which is the third thing I think you can do to really create your own style. And Eric talks a lot about this in his tutorial. I'll put a card up in the video right now and the link in the description. But how do you decide uh, what information is more important? How do you convey this to your client or to whoever's looking at these plans? So uh, in Eric's tutorial, he shows you his method, and you also get a sample plan, which we're looking at right now. You can see he's got um, a really dark poche for walls, some lighter lines for texture, and then... Globally, he just uses his red color for all text notes and annotations, things like that. Um, something else you can do if you look at a portion of a set of plans that I'm working on right now uh, is that I use one poche, like a light poche for the walls. I use text notes in a, a red color of my own. And then I use different shades of blue for lesser information, so a dark, dark shade for dimensions, and then a lighter shade of blue for information that's less important than that, like room names and section markers and things like that. So whatever decision you make, the important thing is to stick with it, to be consistent so that every drawing is the same, so that someone reading these knows what they're looking at, whether it's a floor plan or a section or an elevation. They know what sort of information is going to be conveyed uh, with the different colors and line weights and patterns and text notes and that type of thing. And the last thing I'm going to cover is just a technical issue. How do you use this solar path diagram that you were provided with? Um, this is a cool detail component family that I made. Um, 
that is based on a sketch Eric did and that he provides with his drawings. So if you select it, you can see that you've been given um, Mount Desert Island in June, and it comes with these uh, angles for the sunrise and the sunset, and it comes with the time, and you can basically place this over top any drawing. But how do we get that information, and how do we change this thing? I'll show you right now. The first thing is we need to get the data for what we want. And so I, I use this website, the US Navy Observatory uh, Altitude Azimuth Table, and we provided you guys with that link. And you can fill in um, the year, the date, the time interval, so it's going to show me every 10 minutes um, in Maine, in Bar Harbor. And if we look at what that table is, it's just a list of numbers, shows the altitude, which is the height of the sun, and the azimuth, which is the angle. And so sunrise will be the first number you see that's above zero. So at 710, the sun is above zero, and the angle is 123.6. And then same thing in the evening, the first one that is below zero is sunset. And so at 1600, so at 4 p.m., it's at negative 1.4, and the angle is 237.8. So let's write those down. If we come back into Revit, we'll select our family, edit type, we'll duplicate, we'll make this one December, and we change the time, so our time for sunrise was 7.10, our time for sunset was 4 p.m., then our sunrise azimuth, our sunrise angle was 123.6, and our sunset angle was 237.8. If we hit OK, it'll change. So sunrise comes down here, sunset is down here, and then the times change. So you want to set, um, say, a certain day or month globally um, where you can use it over and over again. So that's what I did with a type. But for how this thing actually looks, you can change um, the size of it. You can change the outer radius. You can change the width of the bands right up here as an instance with each individual one. And it's important to note that the shadow you're seeing is set under the sun settings. So wherever your project location is, um, just make sure you set your project location. You can set your date and your time. And if that matches up with your diagram, uh, it'll be pretty effective. But the diagram is a fun thing to use and, and can really sort of set your projects apart. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope I was able to answer your questions about the 30 by 40 Design Studio Revit template. If you want to learn more about Revit, uh, the way an architect uses it, not just for renderings, but for actual construction drawings, please check out my website, hyperfinearchitecture.com. I've got lots of free tutorials on all kinds of different Revit things, and I've got a full-length pro course um, that goes over how to actual model and annotate a house for design development and construction document level drawings. If you got any questions, please uh, check out the course page and go ahead and visit my website and send me any questions you have. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.